Before we get started, I just wanted to let everyone know that most of the products I'm featuring in this video were provided to me for free by the brands. However, all opinions expressed in this video are my own and I will be giving you my honest thoughts on each product. A couple of months ago, I put together this new setup and as much as I love how everything turned out, there's always room for improvements and because I'm just obsessed with rearranging my desk space. For starters, I didn't have a dedicated audio setup. But a few weeks ago, Klipsch Audio reached out to me on Instagram and asked if I wanted to check out the 7s or the 9s, their newest powered speakers from the Heritage line. Of course, I wouldn't turn an opportunity like this down, so I went with the 7s, but they are big speakers and I knew they were not going to fit on my desk. So I turned to Pinterest for some inspiration and ended up ordering a pair of all white steel speaker stands from Amazon. The goal was to find something tall enough so that when I'm sitting at my desk, the height of the speakers would be close to ear level. The ones that I bought are 37 inches tall and are made by a company called Rockville. They were available in black or white and comes in a range of sizes. I read the reviews before purchasing to make sure that the XLR speaker cables can be routed down through the stands. What I completely forgot to take into account was the power cord on the main speaker, so I'll just have to figure something else out later. Now these stands are not high end by any means. They cost only $85 for the pair, and I would say the overall construction is pretty decent. However, if you accidentally bump into them, they are a bit wobbly, so I wouldn't recommend them for a high traffic area, but for what I would be using it for, it should be fine. The 7s offered multiple ways to connect via Bluetooth, digital audio input, HDMI, auxiliary, and USB. My preferred connection is via USB to ensure there would be no latency issues. After I finished setting up the speakers, it was time to tackle the biggest project of this video adding an accent wall. I've toyed around with the idea of painting the back wall a medium to dark gray but never put much thought into it. Then sometime last year while browsing around on YouTube I discovered a company called The Wood Veneer Hub. These guys offered pre-made wooden acoustic wall panels that seem effortless to install. The panels come in many finishes including natural oak, walnut, and even a few painted variations. A few of my creator friends opted for the natural oak or walnut which adds a warm earthy tone to the space but since I already have wood flooring and a hardwood tabletop, I went with the dusty gray color. I was pretty anxious to get them installed because I wasn't sure how the gray would look but I figured worst case scenario I can always repaint them. Each box contains two panels measuring roughly 94.5 inches by 12.6. The dusty gray panels retail at about $200 per box while the natural oak and walnut are $250. They were very well packaged and all of the panels that I received came in perfect condition with no damages. Each individual slat are stapled onto a thick felt and the entire panels are overall pretty lightweight and easy to transport. After measuring the height of the wall where the panels are to be installed, it was time to cut. Cutting the panels was not difficult at all if you are familiar with using power tools. I made sure to mark the cuts properly and clamp the panels down to prevent any unwanted movements. I do have to admit that I was a little nervous to use the circular saw because it has been a few years since I last used it. So I went ahead and watched a quick instructional video to refresh my memory and after cutting 2-3 to three panels, everything went smoothly from there on. And I made the rookie mistake by cutting inside the garage. There was sawdust everywhere but I used the leaf blower afterwards to clean everything up. Now it was time to get them on the wall. There are a few different ways to install the panels, using glue, a nail gun, or screws. I picked up a box of black drywall screws since I think this was my best option. To make the install easier, I added 8 screws to the felt and lined up each panel with the bottom of the baseboard and screwed it directly onto the wall. Since the panels are pretty lightweight, there was no need to locate a stud. They hold firmly onto the drywall without hesitation. I started off by using only two screws per panel to make sure the slats were straight and to get an idea on how they were going to look before fully installing them. Here's a quick glimpse of how they turned out. Next up, I decided to mount the Aperture 60D light to the wall by using the adjustable boom arm I bought off of Amazon so that I can remove the C-stand and create more space. This would be the second arm I'm installing as I do have another one mounted across from this one. I mainly use these lights for when I'm shooting content and rarely are they ever used when I'm working at my desk. Now it's time to reset the desk with some new accessories and everything mentioned in this video will have a link in the description so you guys can check it out. I'll be swapping out the human centric desk shelf because for one, the finish on it doesn't match the maple tabletop. And second, I wanted something slightly smaller so that I can shift the dual Apple Studio displays towards the right to allow more clearance for the mic arm. So my friends over at Grovemade sent me their updated solid maple desk shelf. This shelf matches the tabletop much better and I personally prefer the size. I've used Grovemade accessories in the past and I know their quality is second to none, which is probably why you see so many people use their products.
If you were wondering why I'm removing the second studio display, it's because I got a new monitor arm. There is nothing wrong with the current one, which is the Ergotron HX. I've had it for over two years and it's one of the best on the market, designed for heavier monitors up to 49 inches. But I wanted to try out the Herman Miller Olin monitor arm because it has a wider range of motion and it looks really clean. It was super easy to install, can hold most monitors up to 20 pounds, and features a three-point cable organizer system to keep the cords tidy. And it had no issues holding up the studio display. After getting everything set up along with the wood panels installed, the office space felt completely different. I am super happy at how the wall slats turned out. I think the contrast between the gray, white, and wood tones complement each other very well. Most of the products on my desk are still the same, but I will go over what I recently added. I am still using the workflow desk from Human Centric, and with the addition of the Grove Made Maple desk shelf, both surfaces are now almost a perfect match. On top of the desk shelf, I added a little lamp that emits a warm light and is dimmable by rotating the base. And I'm still using the base model 14 inch M1 MacBook Pro, but I now have it on a vertical stand. The stand is from Human Centric and I really like the simplicity of it. The design is very clean and minimal and doesn't draw too much attention. And instead of having the Apple logo face outwards, I flipped the MacBook so that the Thunderbolt port is on top to hide the cable from view. I'm a huge fan of only having to use one cable to power a setup, and this is only possible when you add a docking station. I recently upgraded mine to the CalDigit TS4, and after using a handful of Thunderbolt 4 docks on the market, this is by far my favorite one and I'll tell you why. For one, most of the Thunderbolt 4 docks have the host port on the front, the TS4 has it on the back. Now for some people, the host port in the front won't be an issue, but if you are like me and prefer less cables in sight, then the TS4 is the perfect choice. Also, the TS4 has a larger power supply of 230 watts compared to the other ones on the market which is only rated at 135 watts or so. So even if you used up all the ports, there should be sufficient power to keep everything running. And I'm also using the CalDigit Tough Nano Plus 2TB portable drive to store my video projects. It's ultra portable with a USB 3.2 Gen 2 interface and helps maximize the storage space on my MacBook Pro. And I can always take it with me when I plan on working elsewhere. Another new addition to the setup is the Angry Meow AM Compact Touch keyboard. This keyboard is slightly more compact than a 65% layout because it doesn't have any arrow keys, but instead there's a touch panel as a replacement. The quality and design feels premium, and the icy silver switches sound great. But I'm not sure I love it. The touch panel takes some getting used to, and it's lacking the option key on the left side, which I use a lot to trigger shortcuts. For now, I'm still going to give it a try for the next few weeks, but eventually, I think I will revert back to using the mode sonnet. The palm rest is from Human Centric, and it's still the same one I was using from the previous desk tour video. If you haven't seen it, you can check it out on my channel. The Logitech MX Master 3S mouse is also a favorite item that I've been using for quite some time. The desk pad, however, is sort of new. It's from Grovemade, and I actually own the same desk pad in multiple sizes, but I love the small one the most. The mat features a cork bottom, and the top is made of natural linoleum with a smooth matte finish that feels really durable. After trying out so many desk pads in the past few years, this is the one I keep coming back to. Now this next product was an impulse purchase, and I'm not even sure why I bought it. It's the Audient ID4 Mark II audio interface. I think the only reason why I bought it was because I wanted to use the Shure MV7 mic with an XLR cable rather than the dated micro USB cable. Or maybe because it looks super fancy and I feel more professional with it on my desk. Most people even say that there isn't any audio quality differences between using an XLR versus a USB, but I feel that my audio sounds a bit cleaner. Speaking of audio, my favorite upgrade to the setup has gotta be the Klipsch 7s. These speakers not only look stunning, but they sound absolutely amazing. There are two brushed aluminum dials on top to switch input and adjust volume. And the magnetic grill makes it easy to remove, and I'm even thinking about leaving them off because it looks pretty nice without them. Here's a quick sample of how they sound. It may be a bit overkill for this little office space, but the sound quality is exceptional. Moving on, the last item I added was this gigantic tank of a file cabinet. The reviews on Amazon literally said it was built like a tank, and it's not a lie. 
This mobile cabinet is from a company called Vari and I paid a whopping $375 for it. And right now I don't have much in it, but I do have this awesome dust blower that I picked up from Amazon. It's rechargeable and does a great job at keeping just about anything free of dust. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you have any questions, please drop me a comment or hit me up on Instagram. Take care and I'll see you guys later.